I've gone ahead and created all the stage table from the dimensional model that we created earlier. You can verify that it has all the attributes included on the dimensions in the model by looking in stage dim customer and expanding the columns section and you will see that it has all the attributes that we included. The same for employee and for product and so on and so on. The next step is to actually get the data from our source systems and into the tables. So in order to show you this, rather than typing all the syntax by hand, I am just going to show you what I have pre-written already. So first, let's put some data in the customers table. We are selecting the fields from our source system, which is the Northwind DB, uh, DBO schema, customers table, and these are all the fields that we need in order to fill the attributes that we included for dim customer. So when we have those fields, we then insert them into the stage dim customer table, and this is the stage dim customer table in the test DVH, because I'm accessing this database, using this database. Then before inserting that, if there is any data in here, I'll just truncate the table and actually empty it out. So let's run this bit of the code, execute. We can see 92 rows affected. That's true because we had 92, sorry, we had 92 rows in the actual customers table. And we can verify that that's correct by selecting top thousand, waiting, and here's the data. Now, if I go back and I just run this bit, of course, it truncates the table and this table will turn up blank. So every time this bit of the code is run, it's going to empty the stage table and fill it with all of the data that's in the customer source table. The next table that we're going to fill is the DIM employee table and we are selecting these fields from employee and inserting it into stage dim employee. Before doing that, we will truncate the table in order to make sure that it's empty beforehand. And if we execute this bit of the statement, we will have nine rows affected. And that's true because we have nine employees in our uh, source employee table. For the next part with the dim products table, we need to insert data coming from different source tables. We need to access the supplier table in order to get the supplier name. And we also need to access the categories table in order to actually get the category name. So we select all the fields coming from the products table and then also fields coming from the supplier table and inserting them into the stage dim product table. In order to change the name of company name, which is coming from the suppliers table to supplier name, we write this S supplier name. Then in the join section, you can see that I've put these P, S and C. These are just shorthand forms for the table so that I can refer to the correct table names up here. And just like in the previous ones, we truncate the table before we insert the data. So if I run this, I will get a message saying that 77 rows has been affected. So that means I have 77 rows inserted on my DIM products table. The DIM shipper table is pretty short. I just need the shipper ID and the company name and insert that into my stage table in which shipper ID and shipper name are the fields. So if I run this, I will get a message that three rows have been affected and that's correct because I have three shippers. The final step of our ETL load is getting data for our stage fact sales table. So since we need data for the fact sales table in its most granular form, we need data from the orders details table and combine it with fields from the order header. And you can see that I'm inserting this to fact sales by selecting all the relevance fields. And again, I use the shorthand form O 
by just typing O here in the from clause and OD for order details and then the join O order ID on OD order ID. You can see there's one transformation happening here as well. We have unit price times quantity times one minus the percentage of discount offered and I'm saving that as line total as per the ESTA dimensional model. The next step is data cleansing. And if you recall in a previous video, we know that a lot of the regions are unknown. And we also know that there is an unknown uh, postal code for one of the customer in the customer table. So let's update that. Let's start with the, the null version of uh, the postal code which we know is in the dim customer table. Let's actually verify that it's there first. So you see, we have null for postal codes on these two records. Then we want to update the table in order to set it to unknown rather than null. So set postal code and let's do unknown in big capital letters where postal code is null. So if we execute that, then now we can verify that there are no null postal codes in the customer dimension table anymore. We know as well that we have an issue with region. because we have a lot of nulls here. So either we can choose the exact same strategy where we just go region unknown if region is null. Now we can verify again that we have fixed all these issues. There is no more entries in the dim customer table in which region is actually null. There's gonna be another problem that I can show you here in the stacks, stage fact sales table. If we say select top thousand rows, we'll see now that there are actually nulls for these ship dates. That's because the orders haven't been shipped yet. So the problem with this is that in the next layer where we have the final version of our transformed data in the EDV layer, we need to link this to the date dimension and, and it's going to have a foreign key relationship. But we can't make a foreign key relationship if it actually allows null values. So we need to fix that as well. And the strategy for that we can use is uh, updating the stage fact sales table set ship date equal to, and then I'm going to use a date very much in the future so that we know that we, when we link it to the date table, that this date is going to be included in that table. And also that when you, if you decide to sort on date in your front end tool, then you're not going to assume that orders have been shipped because this date is so very, very much in the future. And I'll just use this as 2100. Yeah. And of course that's just like the others where shipped date is null. Let's do that. I can tell you that there is going to be a little bit more uh, data cleansing to do on at least one other dimension table, but I'm going to let you figure that out on your own.